Hello, hello, brothers and sisters. It's a new week. We have a new show for you, Speak of Africa. I am Prince Ojong, your host. We have a lot of news for you. We know you love Africa, and we're going to share a whole lot of what has been happening this week in the motherland. But before we begin, we want to say thank you very much to all our subscribers. We've noticed that a lot of you are subscribing to this show. And we thank you for your trust and for the confidence you've placed in us. We thank also those who are watching this show for the very first time. If you are watching the show for the first time today, we ask you to subscribe. Welcome to the Speak of Africa family. We always love this platform, and we love when you join us to share ideas on this platform. We also thank those who have been advertising and promoting this channel. We will talk about you at the end of the show, but we say thank you also. For the news of today, we want to start with uh, La République du Cameroon. A whole lot is happening in La République du Cameroon. For many months, we have said to you, La République du Cameroon is a country in which things are falling apart. The center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loose upon the world of La République du Cameroon. Everything we told you in the past is coming into fruition. Some were arguing, Prince Ojong, when is this going to happen? You keep talking about things fall apart. They are happening in your face. When you look at the Republic of Cameroon, there's no rule of law. Theoretically, you think this country is a democracy. It's not. Mere anarchy is loose upon this horizon. Okay? That's what is happening in the Republic of Cameroon. And you can see what has been happening. What has been happening pretty much, you saw Mr. Paul Bia, he's aged, looking old and senile, so he doesn't control the power. So power is leaving the dying king. As a result, there is a lot of conflict within his clan. When you look at the clan of Paul Bia, it's divided among the Bulu people, the Eton people, and the Ewondo people. Mr. Paul Bia himself is Bulu. His wife is Ewondo. Then, of course, you have the Etones, where Etudi, the presidential palace, is located. Now that these people are already preparing for the after Bia period, the post Bia period, that's really what's really happening. People are jockeying for position. Who is going to succeed Paul Bia? Most of these people know that it's a cardinal sin to show any sign of presidential ambition. As a result, they are playing just like chess players. They are moving on the chess table gingerly, trying to position themselves so that they can take over from Mr. Paul Bia. So it's like a big war that is happening. With the killing of Martinez Zogo, this laid trebear the conflict that is going on within Mr. Bia's uh, clan. Okay? Because it looks like much of the information that F Martinez Zogo shared came from Ferdinand Gongo. Ferdinand Gongo is really like the acting president of La République du Cameroon. He has close ties to Chantal Bia, Paul Bia's wife. He comes from Nanga Eboko, the same area where Chantal Bia comes from. So people de declare that these two individuals are like brother and sister. And it looks like Chantal Bia uses her female wives, is protecting Ferdinand Gongo. Even when the other come, they come monopolized by Bia's henchmen, Mvondo Ayolo, Laurent Esso, wanted Ferdinand Gongo to appear in front of the criminal court. He refused. He did not obey that court. He knows that he controls the B, the Battalion d'Intervention Rapide, which is Bia's private army. He controls this army. So he knew that there's no force that this guy can use to eject him and take him to this criminal court. So. The other people had to back down. So what he's doing basically is to show that the Laurent Esokam, the Minister of Justice of Cameroon, is very corrupt. So Martinez Zogo became a victim of this clan warfare. He was trying to share a lot of the information he had received from Ferdinand Gongo against Laurent Esso, Amugu Belinga, Jean-Pierre Amugu Belinga, Motaze, Louis Paul Motaze. So the clan is really divided. That's what is really happening. So as a result, you can even see, when we spoke about 
the Canada Peace Initiative. We said the initiative is going to falter. When we said this, we knew already because we understand the dynamics. We have people who work for this regime and they feed us with a lot of information. So we knew that the Canadian peace process is not going anywhere. So some of you were attacking us after we aired our video, saying we do not know anything, we don't follow the facts. No. We're saying this based on the information we've gathered. We're not saying it because we claim to be all-knowing over Sabi. No. We don't have to boast. Personally, I don't have to boast. We're doing this show not because we want to prove that we know too much. We're doing this show because we want to provide a platform where we can engage our people in a dialogue, in a discussion, a discussion of the problems we face in Africa as a continent. We're not doing this show because we perceive ourselves to be the smartest Africans on earth. So don't get this wrong. We just want us to be able to discuss. So we welcome people who want to discuss. You can challenge us. It's OK. That's the fertile environment we want this show to create. So we're not going to become enemies because you have ideas that are contrary to our ideas. All what we're saying is, don't just presume that we don't know what we're talking about, because it's a very disrespectful approach. Even when you differ from other people, respect their point of view. Differ from them respectfully. And that's what we ask for. We always respect people who differ from us. We will not disrespect you, OK? Because we are not doing this show to prove to you that we are the smartest people on earth, we are over Sabi. No. We are doing this show to provide a platform where Africans can share ideas on how to move the continent forward. So as you can see, whatever we spoke about, La Republic of Cameroon and the Canada Peace Initiative, it worked exactly the way we predicted, because we knew what was happening. So long as Mr. Paul Bia is aging and dying, there can be no successful peace process. So it looks like this is going to be an initiative that will happen after Mr. Bia kicks the bucket. So we can tell you this authoritatively. OK? Ferdinand Gongo is a hardliner. He's positioning himself with his calm to take over from Mr. Paul Bia. And he has other people like uh, Atanganji, Paul Atanganji, who are really supporting this war. Because the war in Ambazonia is a big business where most of these guys are making millions of dollars. OK? So they want to keep this war going. If this war ends today, it means they are losing money. So most of these people who work for Mr. Paul Bia, I look at them like war entrepreneurs. They are warmongers. They are profiting from war. So why do you expect them not to want this war to continue? So it's naivete if you think that they will not want this war to continue. They are benefiting a lot from it. But I think now with the Canada Peace Initiative, Canada can see finally that the government of Cameroon is divided. They cannot trust the participants who are in this government because they are not serious. The Canadian ambassador had a meeting with Paul Bia for over 90 minutes as he was returning to his country. And he suggested that he could really help to broker peace between the two factions, Ambazonia and La Republic du Cameroon. The Cameroon government under Mr. Paul Bia accepted this overture of uh, peace guidance. But it looks like Mr. Bia's assistants do not like this idea. And this is why the Canadian peace process is failing. But the only good thing for Ambazonians is, with the failure of this peace process, it shows that the Bia government is not serious. The international community knows that this government is weak. So now they should not expect much from this government. Now the international community can now start working to make sure that Ambazonia is free. Because the government in La Republic has a lot of problems. You look at even in Mr. Bia's camp. It's not only divided, but there's so much trouble in La République du Cameroon. The Martinez Zogo death has exposed this government. Okay? Everybody knows the division among the Betty people. Ewondo, Eton, and Bulu are now protesting. Mr. Bia invited them to come and meet him because he wants to sue for peace. But they too are threatening because it looks like historically, the Bulus and the Wondos have always teamed up against the Etons. So that's the, the 
the undercurrent that is happening within this clan. So the Eton people know that Etudi is their land, and they want to fight. They want to fight. Because when you even look at the history of Cameroon, don't forget André Marin Bida. He was the first prime minister of La, uh, La Republique du Cameroon. He was an Eton man. Aijo connived with the French. Then the French used the Bulus and the Ewondos. Don't forget André Marie Fouda and Asala. They worked together to kick André Mbira aside. So the Etons have not forgotten this. And the Etons have realized that at each turn, the Bulus and the Ewondos always play a game that is not nice to them. So that's what is really fueling this infighting. And the infighting will continue until probably Mr. Bia kicks the bucket. Then the war of the clan, the Game of Thrones, will take place. Okay? Then, of course, we have a video by Sebastian Ebala, who is also a journalist. So when you see some of these journalists sleeping with the enemies in the regime, it's because they need money. So that's another dynamic that is happening in La Republic du Cameroon. Then, of course, you see Mr. Bia's nephew, Bonaventure Mvondo Assam. Kalista Beyala, a famous novelist in Switzerland, is suing him. Okay? This is also another big story abroad, which is going to play out. So a lot of things are happening in La Republic du Cameroon that are not nice. Then you can even have a comedian called Edudua. He's also complaining about the way things are very tough in La Republic du Cameroon right now. Life is expensive. You can watch the video also and you see what is happening. So it's not really nice. So a lot of problems are happening. It's not just the death of Martinez Zogo. Many more things are happening and things are not really nice. Then, what is the consequence of Mr. Bia's refusal to make peace with the Anglophones? Of course, there has been an escalation of violence in Ambazonia. That's what we can tell you. Serious escalation of violence. No pity. You can see foot soldier FM No Piri is back. You see a video where he takes on Mr. Bias B and vanquishes most of this military. There are even signs of a lot of the soldiers he killed. Blood is everywhere, but we don't want to show you the blood. Take a minute and watch No Piri's video. Asawana. Asawana. Asabuan. Asabuan. Isimili. Yes, this one are foot soldier No Piri. Today, the 26th January 2023, where me, no pity, with the entire Marine force, Forces of Bambala, they move this video for sure. This La Republic, they don't come today. Can for can attack, we say nothing, and this way we don't take them for them. As we should shoot them for here, they run today, the 26th January 2023. When I see not thick blood in this, as they come for, for Bambala, can attack me today. I don't walk them fine. When I see them, all sides are blood. Yes, so I think they will, as we want to enter for harvest, all things then, we will run out, we will run out the tree, climb. I'm over because they climb the tree. Then we will surrender now for push, go back small before they can carry that their body there. But we will still fire that they run to it, all these things. So, if you see, now, case, now the case is for the uh, pistolet, and the, now the pistolet, this will take them for the, and they are smelly cap than this, as I see. When I see, now the thick blood is, I want to see them. Now look and find, when I see the thick blood, blood they all side. Blood day all side as we have seen. Now, here shoot someone there. So, blood day all side. As they be claim say, they over day, they don't know. We will see the one. Now, for here, we shoot another one then. We will see. Now, blood and this. No, we not play. So, La Republic, when we want to come for can find no pity. We not say no pity day at a lot all time. In addition to no pity, you have the Bui Unity Warriors. Take a minute and watch your video. I want your life. We live life. A gender on you with picking them. Them to come. A gender on your life. This yam. Nafis yam. Nafis yam. Nafis yam. Nafis yam. Nafis yam. Nafis yam. Okay, then you also have the buffaloes of Balinyonga. Take a minute and watch their video. The tractor is don't put the thing down. Yes, Air Force Life. Air Force Life. Don't be dead. Don't be dead. 
they don't wise today they get they are lucky for sure there's something but well I know they when they day another day yes general viper you picking them yes a force life oh boy there's so much action in Ambazonia yeah this is uh, colonel big shark uh, we are about to demonstrate so we are at Mbiame uh, 20 2020 2023 January 2023 we are about to demonstrate at Mbiame voilà this is a Omega 201 big virtual yeah Then, of course, the Mafe petrol station has, has been burned because the people are angry over this uh, failure of the Canadian uh, Peace Initiative. So, as you can see, there's so much trouble in Ambazonia, and it looks like the Ambazonian people are winning. It just remains, how long is this all going to continue? We want to take a message from one of uh, the Francophone sages, who says, we have to start preparing for a future of Cameroon without Northwest and Southwest regions. Okay? Did you know Esomba said just that you can see him. Bia and his people have to start preparing for a future without Northwest and Southwest regions. That's something they have to prepare. Next, we leave Ambazonia and move to Burkina Faso. Finally, I Ibrahim Traoré, the new strongman in Burkina Faso, has asked the French forces to leave. So this is big news. Macron, Emmanuel Macron of France, is rat rattled. He doesn't really know what to do. The Bahan mission has failed, so he's thinking about another new strategy that he can bring in to try to rein in the anti-French feeling in Africa. But the feeling is perverse everywhere. Then, of course, we take you to Congo DRC. What is happening? Felix Chisekedi is running for re-election, so he has his hand tied. He has not been able to do much to handle the menace of insecurity in the country. M23 has been kicked out, but it remains a menace, and the sponsor of M23 Rwanda is still in the shadows. So if he is going to win re-election, people are going to look at his track record. Has Felix Shisekedi done much to stem the tide of insecurity in Congo DRC? That is a, co a question for the Congolese voters to address. Next, we we'll move to Equatorial Guinea. This week, Equatorial Guinea has suffered some reverses of fortune. Their VP and playboy, Teodoro Obiangema, the playboy of the Western world, who comes from Africa, he had his property in France seized. Some of the property in America was seized. And this property has been auctioned. I think this property was auctioned a few days ago. And you can see it's full in all the Western media. They're talking about the auctioning of the property of Theodore Ngema. 
then they are planning to use the proceeds from this auction to buy medication for the people of Equatorial Guinea. Theodoro and his father have robbed the people of their wealth. They have stolen their wealth. So the Western powers now are trying to buy medication for the poor people of Equatorial Guinea. So this is like justice, karmic justice. You stole the people's wealth, then the Western powers are helping the people to recover their wealth. <laughs> what a contrast. This is nice. Next, we take you to Niger. Do you need tax preparation services? We can help. Contact PJ Tax Service, America's only full-time income tax preparers. Like the good old doctor, we do not close our doors after April 15th. In fact, we stay open all year round in order to serve you. We are located at 11207A Lockwood Drive, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20901. Make an appointment today with Prince Ojong, your tax expert. Call 240-350-1131 or visit us on the web at www.pjtaxservice.com. Niger also is a country where the French are trying to stay. After losing their stronghold in Mali and Burkina Faso, it looks like the French are planning to stay in Mali, sorry, in uh, Niger. In Niger, you can really see a place where the French have like uranium mines. There's a company called Orano, which is the biggest miner of uranium in Niger. Okay? When you see the French in Africa, they are there because they want to reap the resources that are there. They are not there because they love Africans and they love to fight for Africa's freedom. No. They are there just to exploit Africa. So when people complain that, oh, the French are exploiting Africans in Mali and Burkina Faso, we should remember that the French are exploiting, Russia is exploiting, so the exploitation is still there. So it's not just like a game of replacing one country that is exploiting Africa with another. And because that's exactly what the military junta in Burkina Faso and Mali are doing, replacing one colonial master with another one who is exploiting the, the country. So that, that's not really fair. When we look at Niger, Niger is really a contrast. The president, Mohamed Bazoum, is playing games with Emmanuel Macron, but the people are anti-French. Already there is uranium deposit, nuclear waste is all over the country, and there is risk of sickness from nuclear waste. That's a problem a lot of guys from Niger are complaining about. Their president is supporting France, but Orano, the French company, mining company, is leaving over 20 million tons of nuclear waste in the country. And this is a health hazard. But people are not talking about it because the French own all the media. So they don't want people to talk about it. We are sharing this information with you because we want African people to know. Next, we we'll move to Nigeria. In Nigeria, we know that uh, the election is almost around the corner. But I think the main story in Nigeria this week is the Naira. The Naira is Nigeria's currency. It is salutary that Nigeria has its own currency. Because when we look at economics, it's difficult to develop as a country if you do not own your own currency, which is why we've been preaching the unity of Africa and the adoption of an African currency called the Afro. When you have a currency, it makes it easy for you to grow. When you don't have a currency, it's really difficult to grow. So we've really been very, very impressed when we knew that Nigeria has its own currency, the Naira. Unfortunately, Buhari doesn't have good economic policies to manage the Naira. Now he has come up with this uh, crazy mission of replacing the Naira with a new note. The old note is supposed to expire on January 31st. But the people have been complaining that they have not really been well prepared for the introduction of a new Naira that is more secure. As much as Mr. Buhari is saying the new Naira would safeguard the country against bad, uh, bandits and other uh, fraudsters. But we think this introduction is sudden. The people do not have enough time to prepare. Fortunately, this week we hear there's been an extension of the January 31st deadline. It has been extended to February 10th. The Central Bank of Nigeria announced this, and we are capturing this news for you. So everything has been extended. 
to February 10. But is this going to really help? We don't really think so. Nigeria is a very rich country. Nigeria has a lot of resources. The problem in Nigeria is bad governance. The leaders are not patriotic. They only care about themselves. They don't care about the people. So when we have people denouncing bad leadership, we think this is a salutary move. Next, we move to Rwanda. Rwanda, Rwanda, Rwanda. Paul Kagame has done a whole lot of good things for his country, but this week he's on a hot seat. One, he, he killed a very famous journalist, I think John Williams. And this news is all over the place. People are talking about it. They are pretending that he had an, an auto accident, then he died. But people are saying that this auto accident is staged because there was no police report. Nothing has been done to really investigate the accident. So they just know that Kagame hands are there. Then, of course, there's a problem with the M23. Felix Shizekedi is putting a lot of pressure, pointing fingers at uh, Paul Kagame. But Paul Kagame is saying that he doesn't want the international community to use him as a scapegoat for the Congolese people. But that's exactly what is happening. Finally, the international community has understood that the problem in Congo DRC is Paul Kagame's interference. Okay? It's Paul Kagame's interference. So Paul Kagame is on a hot seat. It's a, it's a, a, a hot seat. He has done a lot to help his country. When we compare him with other African dictators, we think he has done a lot for his country, but he still deserves to be praised and to be criticized for the bad things he has done and he's still doing. Okay? Next, we'll look at South Africa. Have you heard the latest healthcare news? There's been a medical programming breakthrough. Let's go to Ali and Ron for more. Thanks, Seb. A Good Samaritan is offering Alexia HTC, a new EMR EHR to doctors for free. Certainly, this free offer will shake things up in the medical software industry. Alexia HTC is a David pitting itself against the Goliaths, Epic, Surmer, and Meditech, which are old and cost too much money. What happens if you figure out how to build a new EMR EHR on the web for pennies on the dollar? You give it away to the suffering physicians for free. Want to learn more about how these two powerhouse solutions will help you win more business? Schedule a demo below. In just minutes, Alexia HTC can help you access a patient record, enter an order, write a note, prescribe a medication, generate a charge, and create a super bill. Plus, Alexia Care Corporation, the vendor of the new web application, offers full customer service and training support free of charge. Who can beat that? South Africa is having a whole lot of uh, economic problems, but the leader, Cyril Ramaphosa, is not only focusing on the problems of the country, he's focusing more on feel-good relations with Russia. How is that going to really help the unemployment situation in the country? We think it's not really helping the unemployment situation. We ask him to focus his attention on the economic problems of his country rather than wasting time on the relationship with Russia. That's a colonial relationship. It will not really bring much to the people of South Africa. So let him focus on ways of helping his people get better jobs. The people will be happier. They will be happier even with him. Next, we end our show by going to Zambia. Zambia is an interesting case. There too, you see the Russian uh, foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, visiting, making overtures to make himself look good. But we don't really think this is really something uh, salutary. Zambia has more problems. We ha we're asking the president, Akahinde Ichilema, to focus on ways to move the country economically forward. This would be good. Okay? Similarly, we saw that Angola also, Angola is really spending too much time Lorenzo Jao, the president, spending much time romancing Russia. We know they've had long colonial ties, but focus on helping your people move the country economically forward. If you do this, it will be salutary. Most of these colonial powers only want what Africa has. I take you back again even to Niger. There's a video of a young girl who tells us the way France is exploiting Niger, the uranium in Niger. Before we end this show, we want you to watch this video 
and this is what is, what is going to take us out. Watch the show of Niger and the young girl who is showing the video of France exploitation in Niger. Niger has one of the biggest uranium deposits. Ah, how interesting is it that one of the biggest U.S. foreign drone bases happens to be there? One. Two, that France has a strong military presence adjacent to this big uranium deposit. And then finally, that I think it's one in three French light bulbs, the light bulbs in France, one in three of them gets energy from that uranium deposit in Niger, in Africa. And let us contrast the reality of the fact that as far as I know, most of the French population has access to electricity. I think they have a hundred percent electricity. Twenty-four. Uh, last I was rate. last last I was there. It was twenty-four hours a day, always coming out All of the, the time. Mm-hmm. What is the access of the people of Niger? It is less than I think fifteen percent have access to the grid, let alone the guarantee of electricity. Those are the people of Niger. And I'm saying this because we've just seen in Afghanistan, they've left Afghanistan 20 years, over 2 trillion spent. Is it 2 trillion, right? Two point. Uh, I think I, I think it's an underestimate. I think it's closer to 6 trillion. But let's to be generous, we can say 2 trillion. It's still an absurd two amount of trillion. money. 2 trillion. Let's right? be generous. <laughs> and how much of the population has access to electricity? It's less than a third. I think it's a yeah. qu- closer to a quarter of the population. So in Niger, you have 80 plus percent of the population don't have access to electricity. We've seen what has happened in Afghanistan. Most of the population doesn't have access to electricity. Yet we still don't want to talk about the fact that the U.S., French and foreign military armies are essentially protecting their access to these resources at the detriment of the African continent. Finally, I want to thank all those who support this show. And we want to thank those who are advertising with us. We say bye-bye. God bless you. Medical practice software is too old. Indeed, all the programs are built on mumps, technology of the 1950s. And the programs cost too much money. Epic and Cerner cost billions of dollars. Meditech costs thousands of dollars too. In fact, That's why we created AlexiHTC.com, a new and free EMR slash EHR for doctors. AlexiHTC.com is built for HIPAA. Yes, magical one-screen technology, ease of use, quick charting, amazing e-prescribing, tight labs integration, multi-office difference, because we believe doctors and patients need a break today. Be the first to test drive AlexiHTC.com. You have nothing to lose. You have everything to gain. Act now. Call 240-350-1131. Alexia Care Corporation at AlexiaHTC.com. Selling a service or a product? Need buyers? Use the African Nation TV as a channel to reach many viewers. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. Act today.